A parliamentary committee has proposed a range, of a range of changes to the handling of the Racial Discrimination Act. The Human Rights Committee has just spent three months considering whether parts of the legislation are too restrictive on free speech. Many coalition MPs hope the inquiry would prompt changes to Section 18C of the Act, which makes it illegal to offend, insult and humiliate someone because of their race. The committee's rec report has put forward 22 recommendations, including time limits on the complaint process and more parliamentary oversight. For more on this, I'm joined in the studio by Race Discrimination Commissioner Tim Sudpomasan. Tim, always great to see you. Thanks so much great to be for here. dropping in. We just heard that report uh, being tabled there in Parliament by Government MP Ian Goodenough. Let's just talk through some of the points that happened there. He spoke of this threshold as to what offence has changed and shifted dramatically. This is since 1995, since these particular provisions were put in place. Do you agree with that, that that, that, that dialogue has shifted and changed? We've seen the Racial Discrimination Act since 1995 offer protection against racial vilification for all Australians. It's my view that the law strikes an appropriate balance between freedom of speech and freedom from racial vilification. It's clear too from the committee's report that there's no consensus for changing the Racial Discrimination Act. Where there is consensus is on the strengthening of the complaints handling work that the Australian Human Rights Commission does. But let's be very clear, there has been no recommendation from this committee for changing Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act, although the report has uh, looked at a number of options which has been uh, raised in the public debate we've had in recent years. Let's talk about then that strengthening of the complaints process. It's only just been tabled, so I assume you haven't had time to go through every single point. Uh, what areas do you think they're probably going to be talking about here? Uh, the Commission made some submissions to this inquiry and we proposed a number of changes to the process because we believe that we can be more effective at dealing with unmeritorious complaints. So there's right. there's no uh, argument there from us for, for ways that we can strengthen the process, um, but that's a separate matter from the substance of the Racial Discrimination Act. Um, and as you rightly highlight, Section 18C provides a protection against forms of racist speech. Uh, it's also important to recognise too that 18D of the Act provides a number of exemptions for freedom of speech, so artistic work, anything that's done for a genuine purpose in the public interest, fair comment, uh, these are all protected and exempt from being in breach of Section 18C. So where do you think then the debate is going, given this? There, were, there seemed to be a little bit of a sense that there would be changes. Uh, Ian McDonald, good enough, was basically saying it's not up to the government to kind of police these things. The, 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 law, the law really sends a powerful message about our values as a society, and if we're committed to racial tolerance and civility, it's only appropriate that we have laws which set the tone for our society and set a standard. Uh, this is what the debate's really about, and striking a balance between freedom of speech, but also the freedom that people should enjoy from racial vilification. And it's clear that a wide uh, section of Australian society, uh, in, indeed an overwhelming majority, are pretty comfortable with the current provisions. So recent research done by Western Sydney University and also UTS found that over 75% of people support the existing provision. Uh, fewer than 10% uh, believe that it should be lawful to offend, insult, humiliate or intimidate people on the grounds of race. It's interesting who we define as that wide section of Australian society because, again, Ian Goodenough was saying that, in fact, the uh, mainstream Australians, there's a disconnect from the sort of talk in the pub to that uh, in the suburbs basically. Mm. Who is a mainstream Australian? He's essentially probably saying someone in white areas, but I would say I'm mainstream, I was born here, um, and I'm technically in that mainstream area. So is this also a debate about who we see as mainstream? Who is that broad section of Australia? Oh, it's a really interesting question, and, and perhaps uh, Mr Goodenough can elaborate on, on, on what he's meant by, by mainstream, because like you, I would consider myself part of the mainstream uh, as well. We're a multicultural society where almost half the population was either born overseas or has a parent who was born overseas. Mm. And this reflects the change that Australian society has had in recent decades. So it really is part of our fabric as a society that we do accept people from different backgrounds. And that's why it's important that we uh, cultivate the right sentiments on this. Uh, I, I believe that if people are going to uh, vent racial hostility at others, then it's only right that they're held to account for it. Right? Are there complaints, however, uh, where some ethnic minorities might use those provisions of law, as Ian Goodenough said, to take things a little bit too far? 
Well, there's uh, no, no evidence that I've seen which suggests that the number of vexatious or unmeritorious claims under the Racial Discrimination Act exceed other statutory regimes uh, which people can pursue. Uh, having said that, we are mindful of the importance of retaining public trust and legitimacy uh, with, provision, with the provisions of the Racial Discrimination Act. Uh, we're always open to strengthening the, the process in complaint handling, and uh, it will be interesting to study this report in more detail to see what the committee has exactly recommended in this area. The Human Rights Commission did put forward a number of proposals for strengthening our complaint handling process, uh, so we, we hope that some of, some of those recommendations have been taken up by the committee and, and hopefully will be considered by, by the government and parliament. OK, and I do, I do um, understand you haven't had a chance to read through the whole report, so I'm just wanting to get your one take on, on a final thing that uh, was tabled there in parliament, basically saying if Section C was a they didn't think there would be any rise in racist attacks against people. Could that be interpreted, however, as saying it doesn't matter if we amend it because it's not going to change anything as it is? You seem adamant that there will be no amendments to that. Oh, well, it's, it's up to the parliament, mm. but the parliament should consider the signal that it sends through anything that it does with respect to the legislation. The last thing we would want to do is f for the parliament to send a signal to society and encourage uh, some in our society to believe that they can rent, vent racial hostility mm. at others and not be held to account for it. Uh, if there's one thing to take out of this report, it's that there's clearly no consensus for changing Section 18C and Section 18D of the Racial Discrimination Act. If there were a compelling or persuasive case to be made for changing that part of the Act, uh, perhaps you would have seen the committee land on a concrete recommendation for changing the law. Yeah, OK, so you things, do you think things will be as they are, at least at this stage? That report obviously needs to be digested, needs to be debated, but... Um... The debate will be had, uh, yep. but let's, let's, let's think about the kind of society we want to be. Uh, I believe we can be a tolerant, accepting, multicultural society, which still guarantees freedom of speech, and that's the balance that I believe is currently struck by the law. OK, Tim Suit-Pomasan, always great to see you. Thanks so much for dropping in. It's a pleasure.